Okay, let's make a really quick and hopefully very simple explanation of specifically A, the distinction between high speed sync and hypersync, and also the advantages of hypersync and what you can do hypersync with. A lot of times I've always found if you say something halfway silly, but which is very truthful, people remember it better. And the high speed sync, which is what everybody talks about specifically when it comes to be it Godox or Nikon or Canon speed lights or anybody else's speed lights, is like the idiot brother to hypersync. What is the difference between high speed sync flash photography and high speed sync flash photography? High speed sync, since we actually have a first curtain and a second curtain on a focal plane shutter, we're not talking about a leaf shutter here, unless you own a Hasselblad or a Fujifilm X100F or an X70 as a leaf shutter, we're talking about a focal plane shutter. We have two curtains in there. Timing is everything in speed light and flash photography. The important thing is timing. Not only that, but specifically T1 time. We could actually talk about T5 time. But let's just specifically keep it simple, talk about T1 time. T1 time is for 90% of the completion of the pulse duration of the flashed or strobe burst to occur. Now, obviously, since we have above the sync speed, of your camera, which is typically 1 250th of a second, but that certainly so depends on the camera, we need to get that timing right such that you know about the black line at the bottom of the frame of your camera where oh, I, I went above my sync speed accidentally, everything was correctly illuminated, but the, the bottom part had a black band. Of course, the bottom of the picture is the top of your sensor. This is the issue of getting the timing right for the curtains such that we have even exposure of your sensor. And there's two ways to achieve this. One of them is what I call the idiot brother to, uh, I, I, it sounds kind of silly, right? But it's kind of easy to remember. The idiot brother to hypersync flash photography, and that's high speed sync photography. Now, anybody that does high speed sync photography, one thing that occurs that they'll never see is that their speed light, or whether that's their Godox AD200, which is doing high speed sync flash photography, is actually pulsing light. Now the issue with pulsing light is to actually get all that charge from the battery or from the power pack to the capacitors and to the xenon tube and then pulse and then do that very, very, very rapidly, which is how high speed sync flash photography works, is difficult. We end up with a huge power fall off. What we're doing is we're actually flashing the capacitor, specifically the speed light, which contains the capacitor. I mean, that's all a speed light is, is a xenon tube a capacitor and a pack of batteries and an external power pack. We have huge power fall off. This means you can't use high speed sync flash photography from very damn far away. Now let's turn on our Godox units here. What I actually have is the Conic light meter. It's actually the only consumer light meter which will actually measure T1 time in thousandth of a second. That's for 90% of the flash pulse duration to occur. So let's uh, shoot at uh, 1 8th power. Okay, we really have one three one three thousand nine hundred of a second, basically one four thousandth of a second. What does that tell you? Now that's manual mode. We actually have no way to get the timing right for hypersync photography. It's like, well, it's one four thousandth of a second at one eighth power. That means if, since one four thousandth of a second is a fatter uh, piece of time than say one eight thousandth of a second, it's like, well, I could shoot this Godox unit at one eight thousandth of a second and do hypersync flash photography since obviously so one eight thousandth fits into one four thousandth of a second which is a larger duration of time but we actually have no way to get the timing right for true hypersync flash photography these speed light units whether it be Godox or the Godox AD 200s and I've got four, dot, four Godox units including four of their wireless triggers all speed lights are basically the same, except for reliability and build quality. They all basically have the same T1 time, which actually varies from output. Let's actually dial it down to typically an average of speed light burst of 1 32 seconds of a power. Let's see how long the T1 time duration is. 1 12 thousandth of a second. Okay, now that's a very, very brief period of time. At that sync speed, excuse me, at that uh, T1 time pulse duration, we can't do anything. All high-speed sync photography is rapidly pulsed light. And the only way a speed light can work, even if you have an external power pack hooked to the front of this, it can't charge that capacitor and dump an enormous amount of light power-wise, as far as wattage or watt-seconds, 
to that xenon tube on any damn speed light. It's just a physical incapability of the nature of the capacitors that exist in these speed lights. The only way of getting around that is to do hypersync flash photography. Hypersync, and the easiest way to think about hypersync flash photography, is that it is just a huge, fat ass pulse of, kind of like the me of lighting, the me of flash photography, right? A huge, fat ass pulse of time. When it comes to studio strobes, studio strobes, generally speaking, most of them, okay, as a general statement, don't do either. They certainly don't do high speed sync flash photography. There's a few tricks to get around that. And most of them, except for really expensive units, like the Braun color, which costs a ton of freaking money, can't do hypersync flash photography. Hypersync is where you're just, typically hypersync is about 1 300th of a second or 1 250th of a second of pulse of light, which is a huge, fat, obese, right? Looking at me, right? Huge, obese period of time for a T1 time duration for a studio strobe to go off, which means... If you have a huge, fat-ass pulse of light, that means that anything above your sync speed, which is typically 1 250 of a second, is going to fit in within that, within that huge, huge, fat-ass pulse of light, right? Now let's actually test the digibi. This is typical, not just a digibi, typical of most, really about 95% of studio strobes, okay? Let's power on. The reason I had these off is actually my uh, speed light would have actually activated the... Uh, the uh, slave uh, condition on these, and I don't actually have to have my Sekonic light meter in the front to judge. So let's go on a full power burst right here. This is typical of most strobes, one one thousandth of a second. Okay? Well, you would think logically, one one thousandth of a second is a pretty fat pulse of light, therefore I could do some hypersync flash photography. The problem is timing, and I'm going to get to timing in a second, like with the Godox external older transmitter over here, something I could actually do with the white lightning. This is a really powerful uh, studio strobe. It's actually over twice the power of the Einstein, which is 640 watt seconds. This is uh, 1,320 watt seconds. Got a pair of these. I got four Einsteins. Got a couple DigiBs and ABR 800s and old, uh, um, old uh, Pulsy Buff uh, Alien uh, Bees units. And I've only got one of the DigiBs. So that's at full power. So that's one one thousandth of a second. Let's actually test it again. At, at about half power. Okay, one seven hundredth of a second. Still, it's a pretty fat pulse of light, but we have no way for timing to occur on this. We can't get that right. Also, too, this is an IGBT flash control. Now, the T1 time, while it is one seven hundredth of a second, the actual curvature of where that actually starts and how fast it actually drops off. IGBT controlled studio strobes, in the case of... Uh, the uh, Einstein units and the DigiB actually has extremely fast drop-off, so we don't actually have this super fat hunk of light. While the T1 time is certainly sufficient, we have timing issues. We also have the nature of the curvature of how the light comes up and actually how it falls off. So it falls off directly at 1 700th of a second. That's, that's an issue. So let's turn this off now. And let's turn on our white lightning unit. Right now I actually have it at uh, full power. We're going to bring it up to about 1 500th of a second. 1 200th of a second. That is a huge, obese, fat hunk of light. Now, I don't want to actually bring it up to 1,300 watt seconds because I have to actually close my eyes and this close. This is meant for shooting outdoors at distance, so let me... Yeah, 1 250th of a second. Let me actually bring it down to a half power. Right now we're at about 20 watt seconds. Let's do a test. One six hundredth of a second. Test again at about three hundred watt seconds. One seven hundred fiftieth of a second. Let's go up to full power slider. Bring it over to about f uh, right now about yeah about four hundred and fifty watt seconds. Okay, which is basically the output six hundred forty watt seconds on uh, the Einstein. Two hundred basically on this unit at uh, at about five hundred watt seconds and above. I don't want to bring it up much higher because it's just obnoxiously bright going off. Basically, one two hundredth of a second. That's a huge. That's basically, if you see this, one two hundred one two hundred fortieth of a second. That's the sync speed, right? With this white light, this is an old unit too, by the way. Pulsy Buff still makes these. Only five hundred fifty bucks for the most powerful one. I mean, this is a huge, powerful 
in at 1,320 watt seconds, I can do hypersync flash photography. This gives me the ability to A, shoot large groups of people. If I want to, people always think, well, high-speed sync flash photography is opening up the aperture and shooting at one eight thousandth of a second. What about other things? What if I want to shoot a large group of people, back them the hell up, stop down for a decent depth of field, and drop some, boom, a huge pulse of light on them? Can't do that with high-speed sync flash photography. You can't do it. It's pulse light. It's not very damn powerful. That's for shooting wide, wide the hell open, f1.8, f1.2, f1.4, not very far away, 13, 15 feet max, depending on the unit. Right? Cranking up the ISO, shooting wide open, shooting one eight thousandth of a second. What if I want to back them up? What if I want to stop down? I have to have an enormous amount of power. I could actually do that with this. Um, the way I did that, and I actually showed you in a prior video, like on the, uh, the older Godox uh, unit here, I actually have a top, which is a center pin, which is trip only. I actually use a, uh, I can actually use the uh, Pulsy Buff trigger for this, but I use the, uh, excuse me, the Pocket Wizard, and another Pocket Wizard plugged in the back here, and I have this and the camera set for high-speed sync. But the high-speed sync is only a timing coordination for telling the speed light or the flash to fire. There's no communication sent through a single pin center pin trip on this. The only thing that is sent is fire. That's the only thing the center pin does. The other pin connectors are timing for cut off and when to initiate. This just tells the unit to fire. If I actually stick another transmitter on top of this, like uh, uh, the Pocket Wizard, and I've done plenty of tests on this, shows prior videos, I could do hypersync flash photography, which is the true superior above sync speed of your camera, flash photography. Beats the hell out of high-speed sync flash photography all day long and even on Sundays. I could do this at one four, uh, yeah, 400, well actually, uh, actually the T1 time on this and the slope above about 200 watt seconds. So all the way up to 1,300 watt seconds on the white lightning. That means I could stop down if I want. I could turn uh, noonday light into dusk, so to say. I'm going to say out of the beach, I want to shoot 20 people, back the hell up, have a decent depth of field, stop the hell down. I mean, why does the hell, why does it have to always be shooting wide up? Why well, when I go to the beach, shoot wide open, shoot one eight thousandth of a second so I could actually turn the, uh, the daylight into dusk light, for example? Well, that's well and fine, and those images are great, but what if you want to do just the opposite? What if you want to back the hell up 20, 30 feet, drop an enormous amount of power, you don't have that option with high-speed sync flash photography. Hypersync gives you every option in the world. Hypersync is neat and wonderful. Does a lot of neat stuff. You're able to shoot above your sync speed of your camera, but nothing comes close to hypersync flash photography. And unless you want to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a brawn color unit that will let you do hypersync flash photography, and only with certain units, the option that you have, and since this uh, older transmitter is available for Nikon and Canon and Fuji, they still send out the high-speed sync comm to fire. High-speed sync is timing only. When I actually use this on my Fuji unit or my Nikon, all it is doing is sending out a timing protocol to this unit, which is normally a trigger to a Godox uh, speed light, but I have an additional trigger up here, and you actually set in the menu system to also fire the trigger that sits on top of this trigger, a trigger on top of a trigger, right? This trigger, the secondary trigger, which would be, for example, um, my Pocket Wizard, or any other trigger that you want to use, is hooked to, via the Phono Jack connector back here, another Pocket Wizard for tripping off hypersync flash photography. Because with the T1 time that we actually have of 1 200th of a second, that means I could shoot 300 watt seconds up to a frigging 1,300 watt seconds out of the white lightning unit here with my Nikon, with my Fujifilm, if I had a Canon, if I had a Sony. That's amazing. Did I mention the Broncolor units cost thousands of dollars and this thing is way more powerful and it's only 550 bucks and it's made in the United States and has an incredible warranty and the best customer service of any freaking customer service on planet Earth? Do I sound like a Paul C. Buff shill? No, I'm just telling you the freaking truth. That's just the way it is. So here's the difference. I hope I made it kind of clear. Hypersync is just a fat-ass pulse of light, and everything else is timing. If you have a fat-ass pulse of light, I know that kind of sounds goofy and crude, right? But it helps you remember it. If you have a huge fat-ass pulse of light in one two-hundredth of a second, I actually, my Seconic timed out. If you actually have one two-hundredth of a second, for example, like on this unit, that's lets you do anything you want.
You could do close, open up your aperture, shoot a one eight thousandth of a second, for example, do portraiture. You can shoot a group of people, tell them to back the hell up 20 feet. Dial it up to, hell, I don't know, all the way up to 1,300 watt seconds. Like, I want to stop down to F-16, have some great depth of field, tell these people to back the hell up. I'm going to illuminate them perfectly for correct exposure, but also I'm going to drop the ambient light. Well, that's wonderful. You want to drop the ambient light? It's a noonday light, a group of people. Okay, F-16... ISO 200, 400, somewhere around there. Uh, 1, 1, 8,000th of a second. Can't do that with uh, high-speed sync flash photography. There's no way in hell you're going to do it. Can with this. So this gives you all the opportunities to do anything you want. Anything. You know, up to a point, right? Basically anything. Don't have that with uh, high-speed sync flash photography. So... I hope you found this video informative and useful. I think I've done a better job at it than other people have done and actually told you an option of how to do it. This trigger is really cheap. It's a $110 trigger. It's a $550 flash unit, which is incredibly powerful. Strobe unit. Did I say flash unit? Same thing. Strobe flash. Um, wrong color unit, just the strobe alone will cost you, oh my god, a lot of money. The trigger costs a fortune too. So I hope you found that useful and I uh, hope that was like a a uh, quick A to Z of HSS versus HyperSync, okay? Thanks. Catch you later, bye.